Coming up on Inside Wofford Football, the Terriers travel to Cullowhee, North Carolina in search of their first conference win of the season and fourth straight victory over Western Carolina. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by Papa John's. The Terriers get off to a fast start with three touchdowns in the first quarter and another in the second to lead by 14 at the half. In the second half, the Catamounts get as close as two, but Walford gets a late score from Mike Rucker to seal their first conference win, 35-26. Hello and welcome to Inside Wofford Football, everyone. Each week, this young Terrier squad has been making strides. But in the month of October, they have zero wins to show for their efforts. But Saturday afternoon in the mountains, the Terriers were finally able to deliver the knockout blow. Wofford got the ball first and scored first as Mitch Allen capped off an 80-yard drive with a 23-yard touchdown to give the Terriers a 7-0 lead. After a Gary Blunt interception, Walford was able to capitalize as Michael Scott ran the ball, fumbled at the goal line, but offensive lineman Ben Wilmoth was there to recover it for the score. Walford up 14-0 late in the first quarter. Stev DeVette called his own number and scored on a 12-yard run. Walford up 21 to nothing after one. Late second quarter, Michael Scott went straight ahead for a 17-yard touchdown as Walford led 28-14 at the half. By early in the fourth quarter, Western had cut the Walford lead to two, but with just under five minutes to play, Mike Rucker sealed the deal with a three-yard touchdown run as Walford got the job done. Final score, 35-26. to When we come back on Inside Walford Football, we'll take a look at the first half highlights as the Terriers hit the ground running early and often. Stay with us, everyone. News Channel 7, Hardy's Spartanburg Regional and Food Line, caring for the Carolinas. At nearly 90 years of age, most people are ready to slow down. Fanny Ruth Hyatt is not one of those people. Fanny is always looking to help a person in need. A selfless community cornerstone with an overwhelming love for the people. If you know a worthy recipient of our award, send us a letter to 250 International Drive, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29303, or email us at wspa.com. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. The Terriers were able to establish the run early in this football game and used a variety of guys to get the job done. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. On first down, they're going to run the option left. Allen with a late pitch away to Rucker. Hemmed in in the backfield. Spins away from two tacklers at the 20. In motion left behind the formation. Rucker, Allen out of the gun. Hand off. Palmer, he breaks tackles to the 40. To the 50. Near side, 40-30. He is sandwiched down at the 25. Palmer all the way down to the Western Carolina 23. The longest run of the year, certainly, for Austin Palmer. Two receivers left, one right. Fake of the dive by Allen. He turns right corner, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Mitch Allen nearly untouched into the end zone from 23 yards away, and Wofford is on the board first. He did a nice job of selling the fake that time. In fact, I thought Mike Rucker had the football looking at through the binoculars. The problem is so many of the Western guys also thought Rucker had the football. 12 minutes and 15 seconds to play. First quarter from Cullowee. Wofford 7. Catamounts nothing. 7 nothing. Wofford leads early in the ball game. Low snap. James has it. Throws and the pass is intercepted. Gary Blunt with the pick at the 45 yard line in the Catamount end of the field. Boy, did he do a gorgeous job of jumping the route in front of the intended receiver, Jacoby Mitchell. In pregame warm ups, 
the wide receivers run patterns and the quarterback throws them the football. Gary Blunt was begging Mitch Allen and Steph DeVette to let him run a pattern. They finally did. They threw him the ball and he dropped it. He walked by me and Collins McCraw and says, that's why I hit people. I can't catch. Well, well he just caught that one for an interception. All on the right hash. Two receivers left, one right. Play action. Allen throws near side, low throw, and a diving catch made by Devin Reed. Third and six Terriers from the Catamount 31. Two receivers left, one right. Allen, forward handoff, straight ahead, Michael Scott. First down and more. Two receivers right, Allen pitches away to Rucker, coming out of reverse left. He's to the 20, angling toward the sideline. 15, 10, high tackle, out of bounds, inside the five, all the way down to the three. Man in motion near side, handoff right up the middle, and Rucker will pull his way to the one. Fumbles toward the goal line. The question is, who's got it? Wofford, they've signaled Wofford, touchdown. Touchdown, Terriers. Michael Scott was the ball carrier. I may have called Rucker. Scott fumbled it, but the officials are signaling touchdown. Ben Wilmoth is the guy that recovered it in the end zone for the Terriers. 7.02 to play in the first quarter. Terriers 14, Western Carolina nothing. Second down and four Terriers from their 25. Again, Allen out of the gun. Gave it away to Parks, and he has room 30-40. Far sideline 50. Parks run down from behind at the 41. Two backs along with DeVette out of the gun. Again, handoff right up the gut to Parks. And out of the gun, DeVette fakes the dive, turns left corner, takes it to the 10-5. Touchdown! Great block by Devin Reed out there to open up the corner for Steph DeVette. DeVette with a touchdown run of 12 yards. 126 to play first quarter. Wofford rolling things up early. 21 to nothing. They lead it over Western Carolina. Man in motion right. James is going to hand it off to one of the receivers on an end around coming near side. 20, 10, 5, and out bounds goes George Richardson at the one yard line. Two tight end formation for the Cats. One of them will shuffle in motion left. Hand off and over the right side. Touchdown Michael Johnson. Catamounts on the board. 13-43 remaining. First quarter here from Cullowhee. Wofford 21. Western Carolina 7. Allen out of the gun, two receivers left, one right. He'll throw to the right where Burson has it in isolation at the 40. Two receivers left, the outside man is Reed, one to the right. Play action, Allen, plenty of time, throws to the far numbers. Caught there by Joslin at the 30. Jitterbugs his way down to the 25, and then he is driven into this synthetic surface. Had him out seven in the box, four linemen down. Allen out of the gun, takes the snap, runs the option left. Takes it to the 25, slams his way to the 20. On second and nine, play action. Allen scoots right, throws, caught by Joslin, far sideline. Rucker in motion, right hand off, right up the middle, breaking through the line to the 40, to the 30, Michael Scott, and he stumbles down at the 26. He had nothing but field turf in front of him, but he was just knocked off balance as he popped through the line, and he stumbled for about the last 15 yards of that carry. Ball on the right hash, out of the gun, Allen, hand off, up the middle, Scott, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Good to see him get in the end zone. He deserved it because he uh, could have and should have probably had one earlier. 2.04 to play first half. Terriers again up by three scores. Wofford 28, Western Carolina 7. Out of the gun, James drops to throw under fire. Let's go with the screen. Taken at the 40, 45, near sideline 50, 40, 30, down to the 20. Deion Wilson, single back with a wing to the right. And it's a toss to Wilson, right side, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Catamounts. We've played one half of Southern Conference football here in the western North Carolina mountains. And your score at the break, the Wofford College Terriers, 28. And the Western Carolina University Catamounts, 14. We'll take a look at a guy who says he's perfectly fine when he's not asked to do his job because of what it means for the team. Stay with us, everyone. Carrier fans, here's your chance to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming athletic event. Be the first caller to 597-4110. Leave your name and phone number in the message, and you could be a winner. Compliment of the South Carolina Education Lottery. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa 
They pick up their games, pick up their teams, and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student-athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. Chris Tommy has enjoyed his time with the Terriers so much that four years wasn't enough. So after his senior season was scratched because of an injury, he decided to come back for his second senior season of sorts. Let's take a closer look at the fifth-year punter and our Terror in the Spotlight presented by Papa John's. After a standout career at Emerald High School in Greenwood, kicker slash punter Chris Tommy chose Walford over a couple of other schools and has come to love the campus located just about an hour from his home. While it took him a while to get used to the campus lifestyle, it also took him a while to get used to the Walford brand of football. I really don't know how to explain it. You know, you come in expecting you're going to punt, you know, fourth and eight, and then we may run the ball up the middle. If I have to punt, I want to make sure I'm doing everything I can for the team to make a good punt and give good coverage for the team. But if I had to, I'd rather not punt. I'd rather us score touchdowns and then kick off. After playing in 34 games his first three seasons at Wofford, Tommy suffered a knee injury two years ago that caused him to miss the entire 2008 season. And he says being forced out of football was tough. I'm a kicker. I'm not supposed to be getting hurt. I'm not supposed to miss a season due to an injury. It was frustrating. It was a long process. I, you know, I heard it my junior season against Georgia Southern. They told me it was just my meniscus. So I'll be back in a couple weeks. I had the surgery and my knee stayed swollen. Kept bothering me. The doctor finally told me my PCL was torn and I was going to be out for the season. His senior season. But he was granted a medical red shirt, and he said there was no doubt that he was coming back for a fifth season with the Terriers. I knew once I got hurt and missed my, my senior season of football, I, I needed to come back. It was just something in my heart, you know, I had to play. In his heart, he realizes punting professionally is a long shot, but that is his ultimate dream. If it doesn't happen, then he said he'd like to go to grad school or perhaps go into the business and banking world when his playing days are done. Hi, I'm Kylie. And I'm Rebecca. We're juniors from South Carolina, and you're watching Inside Walford Football. Coming up, we'll take a look at the second half highlights as the Terriers try to hold on to a 14-point lead entering the third quarter. Stay with us, everyone. Matters TV is brought to you by Spartanburg Regional. Spartanburg Regional now offers an online program that allows patients direct access to their physician. By logging on to MyRegionalHealth.com, they can request prescription refills, maintain medical records, and leave messages. Dr. Brandy Harden explains. It's great for anybody who needs to keep track of all their medical problems that are ongoing, that are resolved, um, keep an update of what medicines they're taking. A private and secure site, MyRegionalHealth.com provides convenience for those on the go. So they can pull their BlackBerry out, they can get online, they can send an email to their physician, get a response back. For more information or physician referral, call 864-560-7999 or visit MyRegionalHealth.com. For Health Matters TV, I'm Allison Hatcher. Health Matters TV was brought to you by Spartanburg Regional. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. At times this season, Walford has had a lead, only to watch as the other team came back to win in the end. This time, they were hoping to reverse that trend. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson with a second half call. Two receivers left, one right, and it's going to be a handoff, and Michael Johnson is grabbed by the shoulder pad from behind and slung down for a loss of one by Zach Bob. Catamounts third and 17 from their 36. Two receivers right, one left. Terriers come on a blitz. Pass caught, but then Deion Wilson is flattened for a loss way back at the 33. Keaton Thompson laid into the running back who caught the little screen. Out of the gun, Allen on first down. Fake of the dive, carries right, he fumbles the ball at the 30, it's loose at the 27, scramble at the far sideline, Western Carolina football. 
Allen turns it over. Wide outs either side, two tight ends. Toss sweep, finding the seam. Michael Johnson, 10-5, touchdown. Look out. Six out of seven on his PAT tries this year. He is from Bostick, North Carolina, and the junior's kick is no good. 9.48 to play, third quarter here from Cullowee. We've got a much closer game. Terriers 28, Catamounts 20. Terriers go out of the gun with Allen, first and 10 from the 32, right up the middle. Austin Palmer, good yards. They go out of the eye. The up man shuffles right. Play action. James throws, man wide open, caught for a first down out of the backfield by Wilson. On the left hash, toss sweep. Wilson looking to turn right corner, touchdown. A two-point conversion would tie it. Offset eye, the deep man is Johnson. James throws toward the end zone, incomplete at the goal line for Pittman. 14.54 to play in the football game. Wofford 28, Western 26. Rucker in motion left. Allen runs the option in direction. There's the seam, 30, 35, and he'll run out of bounds. Far sideline at the 38. Allen will take the shotgun snap from Trey Johnson. They're going to run a reverse. Justice Joslin takes the pitch, turns left corner, far sideline, 40-50 to the 40, cuts it inside at the 35 to the 30, and he is run down from behind at the 27. Offered fourth down and two from the Cat 19. Western with four down linemen, play action. Allen rolling right, he's gonna look to keep, no, he's gonna throw, and it is incomplete at the nine yard line for Devin Reed, couldn't hold on as he tried to make a diving catch. Joslin back deep, awaiting the kick at the 20. Kane with plenty of time. A line drive spiral. Joslin backs up near hash to the 15. Jukes a man 20, 25, 30. Joslin angling left to the 40. 45 cuts it inside to the 50 to the catamount 45. Wofford will have great field position. They'll spot him down at the 43. Justice waited patiently for Coleman Horn today to make that initial block that allowed him to get to the outside. What Justice did was let the block happen. Use that to spring yourself forward. DeVette out of the gun. Handoff, big hole for Scott. 35-30, Scott to the 25, to the 20, all the way down to the 18. Did I call it Scott? I did. It was Mike Rucker. Either way, that's a big run of 22 yards and a first down. Out of the gun. Handoff, Scott cuts right 20 to the 15, breaks the tackle. Scott keeps his feet at the 10 and bulls his way down to the 6. Bursts on the outside, man, one to the left. Handoff, Scott right side, touchdown, and make that Rucker. Mike Rucker into the end zone. Great surge by the right side of the offensive line. Did a tremendous job, and Rucker was able to take it in. Mike Rucker running for his fourth touchdown of the year, and that's big. 4.52 to play in the ball game. Terriers 35, Catamounts 26. Single back remains Johnson. Play action for James. Handoff looking to turn left corner on the end around McClendon. Forget about it. Snowed underway back at the 28-yard line. That play got blown up for a loss of 13. Ahmet Paul and Blake Wiley. Wofford showing linebacker blitz. They're going to sell out, and here they come. James airing it out near side. Intercepted. Michael Johnson has it at the 32. Takes it ahead to the 40. Johnson to the 50. To the Catamount 40. Down to the Catamount 35. Maybe the 36-yard line where he's snowed under. And that could seal it. Michael Johnson with his first pick of the year. Terriers will go to the victory formation. Stev DeVette will take a knee, and unless Western uses their last time out, that'll do it. The Terriers go on the road and win. Here in Cullowee, your final score from Whitmire Stadium, Cullowee, North Carolina. The Wofford College Terriers 35 and the Western Carolina University Catamounts 26. Mark Hauser caught up with Coach Ayers after the game. Coach, uh, you got one. It wasn't easy, but you got one. Right. Uh, we tried to help them a little bit, but um, bottom line, it's a win. Uh, you just don't realize how tough it is until you've been on the journey we've been on. Uh, we're a young football team. We're making mistakes, but at the same time, we're fighting hard. Uh, I thought that um, uh, our kids uh, came to play. We're just young. We're, we're making some mistakes, and uh, those mistakes are costly. What we've got to do is uh, continue to work. We've gotten better uh, the past two weeks. Uh, we had an opportunity to, to win against App, and uh, we got the win this week. So hopefully we're going to continue to get better and, and uh, see if we can win number two. 
you rotated quarterbacks at the start right. of the game right. with Stev and with Mitch. Was that by right. design? And then what happened? Did Mitch have to go out in the fourth quarter? Well, our uh, mindset going into the game, we were going to play them both. Uh, I, we felt like that over the long haul, Mitch has been playing too many plays. A lot of times he's getting so fatigued, I think that that's uh, causing him some problems. Stev's ready to play. Uh, he can do uh, the things that, that – uh, Mitch does as far as throwing the football and uh, running the option, and uh, we, you know, we've got a, a good offensive line. Uh, they're able to create some space. We've got some backs that can run, and you know, it's it's not a, a one-man band, so to speak. I, you know, we, we've got a lot of weapons, and what we've got to do is make sure that uh, that we're doing what we need to do fundamentally, play hard, and uh, then go out every Saturday and give it the best shot we've got, and uh, who knows, may come up with another one. Uh, talk about Justice Joslin's punt yeah. return. Yeah, huge. Um, big time play. Uh, we work extremely hard in the kicking game. Coach Conklin does a great job with those guys. And uh, whether it be the kickoff return, punt return, whether it be uh, any phase of kicking, I mean, we're, we're, we're working at it. And uh, it paid off to, to tonight really big. It gave us a critical field position, which afforded us an opportunity to get the score and win the game. Elon next week with Scott Riddle. He's he's something yeah. throwing the football. Yeah. Scott's a tremendous player. Um, I, I would say that if you look at guys that can throw the football nationally at any level, he's probably as good as anybody. Uh, they have excellent weapons to go with him, and um, and it's going to be a great challenge for us. We're uh, we're young on defense. We've got to make sure that we don't make mistakes. We've got to at least line up and, and play the basic fundamentals that we've been taught to do. I think offensively, uh, we're going to have to be able to uh, move the football, control some clock, try to keep uh, their offense on the boundary as much as possible, and then uh, give us a chance at the end, hopefully, to win. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach Mike Ayers on this week's 35-26 to win for the Terriers here at Western Carolina. Let's hear from some of the players. We came in the first half and, and really did, you know, we knew what we had to do. We did executed, we made plays, and um, we just, right now, it um, looks like come out in the second half, we, we kind of let down a little bit and let teams come back. I don't know what it is. We just got to be able to finish out the games. I'm just excited to get that, that first win under our belt. Uh, we've been working hard um, the past four weeks, really hard to bounce back, and after some tough losses, and I think the guys really responded well tonight, so I'm excited. It feels good to finally get a, finally get a win in the conference. Let's take a look at the final game stats. Walford, two more first downs in Western Carolina. The Terriers with a significant edge in rushing yards, 374 to 175. The Catamounts pass for about 100 yards more than do the Terriers. Total yards, Walford with the edge, 426 to 334. Time of possession, pretty even. Walford has five penalties for 26 yards. Western, six penalties for 48 yards. The Terriers do turn the ball over once for Western Carolina. Turns it over a couple of times. Let's take a look at some scores from throughout the Southern Conference on this past Saturday. Elon all over Chattanooga, 45 to 10. The Citadel with a bit of a surprise, knocking off Furman, 38 to 28. And Appalachian State all over Georgia Southern, 52 to 16. So now let's take a look at your updated Southern Conference standings. It looks like it's a two-man race between Elon and Appalachian State. The Phoenix and the Mountaineers each 4-0 in conference play. Furman falls to 3-2. Georgia Southern falls to 3-3. Chattanooga is now 2-3 in conference play. Sanford, the Citadel, and Walford all one win in conference play so far. The Citadel also has one win to go along with four conference losses. Now let's take a look at the White High Street Exxon play of the week. Comes midway through the fourth quarter in a two-point game after the Terriers defense forced the Catamounts to punt. Justice Joslin fielded the punt at his own 16-yard line and returned it 42 yards down to the Western 42-yard line to help set up the game-clinching touchdown. And for his efforts, Justice Joslin gets our play of the week. Stop hunting. Start finding. 
Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie, our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What would you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. This is where we like to take an inside look at some of the happenings off the field of play. And this week, we have a special treat. As we like to do from time to time, we head into the locker room to catch up with Coach Ayers and hear what he had to say to his team immediately following this victory. We had a lot of things that went right and a lot of things that went wrong. But the bottom line, we found a way to win. That's the key. Again, it comes from work. It comes from perseverance. And it comes from making a commitment out there to the guys next to you. We must get better every week. The next one is coming in a hurry. Let's get back to Spartanburg. Let's rest up and let's get ready to work. You know and I know we're a better team than we showed tonight. We're making too many knucklehead mistakes to make it easy on people. What we've got to do is get our assignments down to where we understand exactly where to fit. Therefore, that gives us the best opportunity to keep people from putting points on the board. There's no doubt in my mind we played hard tonight. None whatsoever. We got after it in the kicking game. We got after it offensively and defensively. But again, it comes down to you know and I know we're better than what we're showing. We're better than what we're showing tonight. And what we've got to do is sharpen it up and get ready for the next one. Appreciate your effort. As always, that's good stuff. Now let's take a look at next week's opponent. Brought to you by Blue Eagle Equipment. And next Saturday, the challenge will be big as nationally ranked Elon comes to town. However, the Terriers have had a lot of success versus the Phoenix as they've won six of the last seven meetings. But Elon did beat Walford the last time the two teams played at Gibbs Stadium two years ago. This year's Phoenix squad is off to a 6-1 start and currently sports a 4-0 record in the SOCON that includes a 45-10 win over Chattanooga this past Saturday. Let's take a look at the particulars. Next Saturday, Gibbs Stadium, 1.30 kickoff. Should be a good football game for the Terrorists. We'll see you back here next week for more Inside Wofford Football.